Hey kids, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. Back for a mid-afternoon pour. I've got the house to myself. It's sunny, it's quiet. Oh my God, I gotta whisper. Um, and I'm sneaking in a pour because I had a meeting at work. I was supposed to go all day and it didn't. So I got to like beat it home and have some fun before I have to like clean house and make dinner. Um, before we get started, I wanted to show you the results um, from the last pour. I don't remember, I guess we're up to 44 maybe. Um, so let me show you that and two others that I'm gonna submit that I have submitted to um, another juried show that I haven't heard back from. So <laughs> a little worry. Let me show you the, um, the so this is a uh, fall on steroids. It's looking great. It's drying fabulously. I'm like way up like this. I should just lower the camera so I could show you. Um, but yeah, super, super happy with that guy. Um, colors haven't changed. It hasn't moved. It hasn't cracked. It hasn't done anything but dry like a good little boy. So we're really super stoked about that. Put him away. He's nowhere near dry. He'll need, he'll need a while. Um, and then just for fun, um, I saw some lady post somewhere on YouTube, like, I don't like people who don't show the dried work. Um, and I'm like, well, okay then. Well, let me show you. So here's some dried works. These weren't filmed. And these are the ones I'm hoping to get uh, into the gallery. The first one, this is just a 10 by 20. This is Lone Wolf. And um, hopefully you can see him. He's right there with his eye. And this one is uh, on hardwood. That's what the back looks like all cleaned up and it has been resin. So that's actually one of my finished pieces um, of what it looks like. This guy's about, oh no, six months old or so. And then another one I'm submitting. This one was actually inspired by something um, last spring. Um, my husband and I tried to take our daughter down town to DC to see the cherry blossoms and we picked the worst possible day. Uh, it was all stormy and windy and rainy and we came back and we were all stuck in the house and I painted a picture and then when I was done, I'm like, oh my God, that's cherry blossoms in the wind. And so really interesting how your subconscious uh, works sometimes because I came home and I did this guy who I kind of really love. So this, this is a uh, 12 by 36. <laughs> I can't get it all the way up. Um, that will be going hopefully into the uh, art gallery for December. So um, one of my favorites though, if it actually sold, I might have to shed a tear. <laughs> so with all that said, um, let's get that on the canvas, show you what we're doing today. Lower this. I gave up on my tripod, I sent it back. Um, it just kept tipping over and my, my kitchen island isn't um, big enough for like the three legs and uh, it was just like a hazard. So I'm sticking with my selfie stick in a, in a uh, vase full of sand and that seems to be just fine. So that's looking uh, pretty good. Another fall inspired pour today. Um, let me show you the colors. Well, it's sort of fall because, you know, pink really doesn't go. <laughs> but I liked it, so I'm like, why not? So all happy colors. Um, so starting off here with the orange, I killed off some uh, cadmium orange, the Liquitex Heavy Body. But it was very, very bright. So I added a healthy dollop of uh, my cadmium red and, and mixed it up. And I got this lovely shade. It's just slightly darker, a little more subdued and not so like that. Um, next is my cadmium red and I'm using a, or I'm sorry, it's not, it's crimson um, by Winsor Newton. Big old thing. And then in this one, one of my, my still, it's been like four whole days and it's still my favorite color, which is the Alizarin Crimson U Permanent Liquitex Heavy Body and I just splooged it on me. Um, and then the yellow is just cadmium yellow pale you, though it's not very pale. Also, Winsor Newton. And then my pink is um, my new favorite brand, the Senlier 
This is number 635. This is Carmine Red, even though it's pink. So um, just love, love the packaging of those. And then as usual, a big old cup of tea white. And I wanted to show you a little hack I do because I had this white left over from the pour from another um, a few days ago. And I was too lazy to put it in a, you know, a airproof, airtight container. So this is what I do. I just throw a glove on it and keep it, you know, keep it fresh. And then I don't lose my glove either. And it's right there in handy. So just a little hack um, if you're interested in doing that. I'm going to go ahead and add three drops of my spot on treadmill silicone um, to these colors. I'm just going to do two in the orange, two in that red. I'm going to do three, one more, two more. Just two in this one and two in the yellow. And give that a, a light stir. So because I'm a glutton for punishment, and this canvas seems to be a glutton for punishment, this poor canvas, this is a, a um, what is this? A nine by 16, 12 by 16. What does it look like? I think it's probably a 12 by 16 um, pre-gessoed hardwood uh, cradle panel from Ampersand. It's been scraped a half a dozen times at least. It just takes a beating and just comes right back from our abuse. So hopefully I can put it to rest today. If not, I'll scrape it again. Um, just kind of playing today. Uh, coming up on the horizon is um, a... 15 by 30 that I'm going to tackle. I just got to figure out um, the colors for that one. So look for that one um, in about a week or so. In between, I'm going to be uh, resining and, and cleaning up and finishing up uh, the ones that have been painted on but haven't been varnished. So with that said, I'm just going to do three little cups on this and uh, see what happens, see what it looks like. I'm going to go with these and take the glove off my white. And I'm start. Oh, I was saying that I'm a um, glutton for punishment and that's because my pouring medium recipe today is I'm trying the glue and water. This will be my last attempt to see if it dries right. So it's just, I don't know, I think I did um, six ounces of um, Elmer's glue all and then six ounces of water. And just to help with the cracking, um, I have golden, I mean my golden GAC 800, but I happened to grab my, my Liquitex pouring medium I hoped a good squirt of that into my, this is what I usually mix in, is one of these quarts. And then I put the leftovers into one of my squeeze bottles. Um, I gave a healthy squirt of the uh, pouring medium to hopefully negate any cracking. And we'll see what happens. Uh, and with that said, yeah, I'm gonna rock and roll. Let me uh, order my colors here. Can you see, you can kind of see my colors. How about if I move this? Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me turn this this way. Sorry. Hold on. Technical difficulties. I shouldn't have touched it. I should not have touched it. Stay. Stay. Right there. Okay, there. So you can sort of kind of see the colors and what I'm doing. That looks even. It drove me crazy in the last video when I played it back that the canvas was crooked. I don't know if it bothered you guys, but it annoyed the hell out of me. All right, I don't wanna go with red first. So this is tricky with the white and the red and they're all gonna turn different colors. You got primary colors in here. This could be tricky, but maybe we don't care. Maybe we just go with it. Anyway, so I'm trying the glue and water recipe again, and then my ratio to paint to PM was about 50-50 with water um, for consistency. So we'll give it another go. 
see what happens. Mm -hmm. It's just yellow and then pink. So I'm sort of kind of starting down the side because I really um, hope to keep they're gonna they're gonna blend when I flip the cups but um, as much as I can keep them separated I'm going to try and then let's do the red Oh, I do like the shade of, oops, am I splooging that off already? Jeez, I can't even pour into a cup. Mm. Let me see. So my husband and I had a um, parent-teacher conference at my daughter's school today <clears throat> and her her uh, her teacher was telling us that um, Chloe and another uh, student got think sheets, which is really really bad apparently, um, because they were writing love letters to a boy. She's in sixth grade uh, in class and not paying attention during science or something. And I said, "Well, what do the letters say?" Because you know kind of want to know the content if it's a love letter and so she found one that she had in her desk and it said oh, what's the boy's name Oliver dear Oliver I like you very very much love Chloe P.S. Ayana loves you too love Chloe bye Oliver so we all had a big giggle over that it was uh kind of funny I didn't want to put my crimson on top of the white, but what are you going to do? But yep, kids at that age, liking the boys. It's like, oh, can I just fast forward to 20? And I'll have to do teenage years. A little bit of pink left. These are pretty full cups. I don't know if I need all this. I'm going to try and leave uh, paint in my cup for sure. Throw it on a little six by six. That's why I buy them because I'm too lazy to store the paint. I'd rather make another painting. What else we got left? Uh, touch of orange. Not even really. We'll just throw that in the last cup. Alright. Anything else? Got a little bit of red. I think I have enough red though. I'll pass on the red. Maybe a dollop of crimson. Good to 
go. Put on some gloves. This might be fast. See, I'm not a, not a chatterbox today. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should flip while uh, I'm putting on my gloves. Let me do that. So while we're waiting for that to like settle down for a second, um, when I was uh, up in New York City um, for the last couple weeks, I went to the, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art a couple times, browsed around, felt inadequate, you know, humbled, um, spent some time in their fabulous gift shops, buying some Christmas presents, and I bought myself a little mascot. Um, who I really, really liked in the box, and he's already got paint on him, which I think is apropos. So this is uh, Vincent Van Gogh. He comes with his own little paintbrush, and he has a little sunflower on his jacket. And the thing that made me chuckle is his ear was removable, and that's a Band-Aid, and I can take that off and, and put his ear back on. And he just hangs out, and he uh, watches me paint. Um, and I really liked him. I like his little Dutch shoes, too. And when I uh, saw the box, I'm like, oh, I have to have that. Um, but then when I took him out and put him, you know, together and put him on his stand here, I realized he looks like either Beavis or Butthead. And I never watched that that cartoon show from 10 years ago or, or whenever. But, um, and please don't comment, it was in 1979 or whatever year that show was on. That always cracks me up when you guys do that. Um, but whenever that show was, I didn't watch it because I thought it was mind-lumbingly stupid and I hated that <laughs> laugh they used to do, but I think he kind of looks like one of them. So if you do know if he looks like Beavis or Butthead, I'm not sure which, let me know. But for right now, we'll just call him Vince and let him hang out. Right, Vince? Yep. All right. Here we go. Let's just go for it. Ready? I'm going to try and keep some paint in my cups. Oh, I did a good job there. One. Hold on. Let me move uh, this painting out of the way. I'm somewhere safe before I splooge paint on it. Two. Three. Take this last guy here. Oh, it's like a giant dreamsicle, isn't it? Total dreamsicle. All right, and I still have like half a cup of paint. Let's see, is it really moving around any or is it just kind of sitting there? I thought I had my consistency uh, fairly, um, fairly perfect. It um, wasn't too, too thin, definitely wasn't thick. So high hopes for this. Let's give it a torch and see what happens. Gangster style sideways just to pop bubbles or put heat without without the flame. Like that. And then oh no. Let's see what happens there. Kind of make a little S pattern right there. And one right some right in there. Not too too much. Give it a tilt, see what we get. I'm 
so I want to get that rid of that line. I'm going to go up toward you a second. That's a bright painting. Holy moly. This is um this is definitely not jewel tones like my last one. Come down this way. Do, 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 do. Okay, off you go. Are you off? Yeah. Close enough. I'm gonna come back my way. Shells are. Shells. The cells are keeping their shape. The only thing is, um, I don't think there's enough contrast, so it's it's really hard to see the uh, phenomenal cells I do have, particularly here. Like I try to zoom in on them; they're gorgeous. But I worry that when it dries, uh, you're not going to be able to see them. I'm really uh, quite happy with the composition, though. And the uh, bits, this, this this yellow is very, very neon. Um, and I do like these open spaces. It helps break it up. I just wish there was more of a contrast in colors here. Like I had, I should have added maybe a little more crimson right here. Um, but you know, what are you gonna do? Got a little spot here on a corner. Add some color too. Like that. And the rest is covered. The, the um, sides are taped because um, it is wood. And um, we'll see how it dries. Maybe um, the red will dry darker against that orange and show up a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to scrape this canvas yet again. This is a type of painting where it's a lot of fun to do and it's bright and happy. I just don't see it hanging in somebody's house. That's the thing. Like, what do you do with this type of painting? Unless you have an ultra modern house with a lot of white walls, um, I'm not so sure this type of painting is marketable. So that's something I uh, sometimes give consideration to. Um, but today was just play day, so um, when I break out the 15 by 30, um, marketability will definitely play a factor uh, into my color choices when I do that. So let me take my gloves off, zoom in, clean up, uh, put away all the evidence. Like, no, honey, I wasn't painting. I have no idea what's under that tarp downstairs. So let me, let me, I'm going to turn up my um, little pendant light. Maybe both of them. Maybe we'll be able to see. Yeah, so no lights. Let me pop this off. And come down close for like see with the red you can really see the, the contrast that really really helps a lot and like the white cells over here. You can really tell that the cells um and this, they're, they're really phenomenal. You just can't see them. So, but this will be a good experiment to see if maybe with a little bit of a, you know, Liquitex or GAC 800 in my glue and water mix, 
that if it dries nice, um, I'll have a winning, oops, where am I going? I'll have a winning combination and um, maybe get some good pours. So, let me come up high. That's what she looks like. It's definitely uh, another fall on steroids kind of painting, so. That's it for me today. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for your support. Check me out on Instagram under Waterfall Acrylics and my Facebook page for Waterfall Acrylics is where I sell my art. So hint, hint, <laughs> so cheesy, I'm sorry, but I have to say it. So I'll see you next time, take care, bye-bye.